everyone, this is Gina. Today I'm going to show you how to make a simple herringbone with crystal and it turns out really, really pretty. So this is what this looks like. The clasping, I put a little extender on it and it's just really pretty. I'm going to see if I can get it off on camera here. I may have to do this um, off camera because yeah, I'll be and right back. This is what it looks like off the wrist. It's really very pretty. So let's look at what it takes to make this particular bracelet. Okay, for this project today, we will be using a 4x4x4 cuboid crystal. This is what it looks like. And if you cannot get these, I have them on my website and I will post a link. But if you're out of the country or you just can't get a hold of these, use some four millimeter fire polish beads. They're basically the same shape and they work really well for this project. Plus they come in a whole bunch of pretty colors and finishes. So you do not have to feel left out. If you cannot get this bead, you can use a fire polish and they're available with all the bigger um, distributors of beads. So just substitute that for a fire polish bead and you'll be fine. And then I'm going to use some 8 O's and I'm going to use just a few 11 O's for my clasping. I'm going to use a lobster claw, cl claw clasp. Boy, I cannot speak today. And then we, I'm going to use some six millimeter round jump rings. So I don't know how many I'm going to use. I just have several out because I may want to make a extender. And if I do, I'll probably use a head pin and make a little dangle too. But at this point, just make sure you have at least one for your clasp and make sure it's a nice heavy gauge. This is like an 18 gauge stainless steel, about six to seven millimeters in diameter. And then I'm going to use some 10 pound nano fill. You can also use eight pound nano fill and you can also use six pound fire line. And I'm going to use a size 12 beading needle. You probably get away with a size 10 on this project too. So whichever is your preference. And then we're gonna go ahead and get started. Okay, to start this project, you're going to put onto your needle about a wingspan of thread. A wingspan is when you spread your arms out to your sides like, you're, like they're wings and you're going to fly away. You measure from your fingertips, the length of your first arm, across your chest, the length of your second arm, to your fingertips on that arm. That's a wingspan. You may have to extend during this project. You probably will. And so if you need to do that, I will put a link in the description box beneath the video player for a video that will show you how to do that. Now I am not, I do not have a full wingspan on my needle right now because I don't want you to watch me pull thread through for a half an hour. So I have a shorter amount, but you want to at least start with the wingspan. Then what you're going to do is you're going to pick up a cuboid, one of your little cubes, two 8 seed beads, and a cuboid, just like this, onto your needle. And then we're going to bring this down to the end of the thread. You don't have to leave a long tail, but leave enough to hold on to. And then go back up through the first cuboid. So this is my tail side. I'm going up through this cuboid on the tail side, and I'm going to hold on to the tail, hold on to the cube, and pull my needle through. And then your beads will make this kind of funny looking thing like this. Let's get you closer. Rearrange the camera a little bit here. And this is what you have. Now we want to turn this into a herringbone, so we have to straighten these beads up. So we're coming out of this cube here. We're going to go up through the 8-0 right above it. Just like this. Hold on to your tail because this can still pull off your tail. Or pull your tail through. Like this. And then we're going to cross over and go down into the cube, into the 8 0 and the cube beneath it on this side. Just like this. And pull. Pull your tail a little bit, tighten everything up. And now we're going to cross over and go into the cuboid next to the cuboid we're coming out of. Now, if you saw, I had a loop of thread there. And the way I tightened that all up, is just to pull on both threads a little bit at this point. And now I'm just going to 
go from this cube into this one and the 8 above it, right here. So basically we're just sewing in a circle around the beads, securing them. Just like this. I'm going to push those down on top of the cube so that they are laying correctly. Back off a little here so that I don't get out of camera. And we're going to put our clasping on here and then we'll work our herringbone stitch through this down here where the tail is on this side. We'll just cut that tail off. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick up an 11-0 seed bead, an 8 and drop them down to the little piece we just created. Just like that. Then we're going to pick up our clasp and we're going to go through the loop on the clasp. And just bring it down towards your beads and then pick up your beads and go into the 8 seed bead and just the 8 not the 11 beneath it. Just like this. And then I am just going to hold on to that 8 between my thumb and my finger and I'm going to pull my thread until my clasp comes up to my little 8 just like that. And then, this is what you should have right here. Now you're going to pick up another 11 and you're going to go into the 8 on this side of the piece now. We're connected to this side, we're going to go through this side, and we're going to go through the 8 and the cube, just like this, and pull this down. <clears throat> and this is what you should have right here. Now we're going to sew back up through this a couple of times just to secure it, make sure that our clasping is nice and strong. So what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of clip this tail down a little bit now, get it out of the way. We can bring it down with lighter later. Just clip it off. And then we're going to cross over from the cuboid we're coming out of. We're going to go into the cuboid next to it the 11 above the 8 so we're going through the cuboid, the 8 the 11 the 8 the clasp is in, and through the clasp. I'm going to pull my working thread a little because that was a little loose, and I'm just going to come up through that, just like that. And then we're going to, now that we're through the clasp, we're going to go back down into the 8 and we're going to go into the beads on this side of the unit now. So go through all three of them, the 11 the 8 and the cuboid here. Pull it down. And then one more time. Let's do this just to make sure it's very secure. So we're going to cross over into the cuboid next to the one we're coming out of. We're going to go up through the 8 the 11 and the 8 and the clasp. See, did I make it through my clasp? No, I did not. Let me get through my clasp here. So, my clasp is in the way, so I'm just going through that 8 and then I'll go through my clasp. And then I'll go down into the 8 again, and then the beads on this side, and all of them. The 8 that you're clasp is on, the 11 the 8 and the cube, and just pull this through. So now our clasping is ready, everything looks good, we are going to begin our herringbone stitch. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick up a set of 8 seed beads like this, two of them. We're, go we're coming out of this cube, we're going to cross over and go down into this cube, and we're going to go ahead and go up into the 8 above it, too, just for this first stitch to secure the bracelet. So we're going to go up through those beads, pull these two down, lay them out, and then we're going to cross over into the 8 next to the one we're coming out. We're going to go down through three beads this time, the 8 the cube, and the 8 on the bottom here. and pull that tight, lay them out a little bit, and then pick up two 8 seed beads. And we're coming out of this 8 we're going to cross over and go down through just this 8 on this side, right here. And then we're going to pull our thread through. 
Then we're going to, now that we're coming out of this 8-0, we're going to cross over and go up through these two 8-0s on this side. So just cross over, go up through the bottom of that 8-0 and the one on top of it, and then give a nice little tug so that it pulls everything together. If you do not pull this nice, the thread will not sink down in there and it will be more visible. So you want to, it's going to be visible a little bit, that's just how herringbone is. But you want to make sure you pull it in there nice and deeply so that it, it's not as noticeable. Then we are going to do a set of cubes. This is a little bit different. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick up a cube, two eight o's, and a cube. Just like this. And we're coming out of this 8 out. we're going to cross over into this one and just one and go down through it. Pull these beads down and they should just lay out just like this. Then we're coming out of this 8 out here, we're going to cross over into this one and go up through three beads. So we'll go up through this 8 out, this cube, and this 8 out. So cross over, go up through them, all three of them. And if it loosens up, don't worry. We'll tighten it as we pull this through. And just pull this through. Nice and tightly like this. And now we're going to pick up two 80 seed beads. And we're going to do just a regular set of her herringbone here. So we're going to, we're coming out of this 80 here. We're going to go down into this one. Just one. And we're going to pull these beads down until they lay out on top of the two previous. Now we're coming out of this one here. We're going to cross over and go up two on this side. Pull that thread in there nice and deeply, just like that. And now we're going to do another set of cubes. So when you do a set of cubes, you just are doing two stitches at once. So you're picking up a cube, two eight o's, and a cube. We're going to do the stitch the exact same way. We're just getting two of them done at once. So we're coming out of this eight o here. We're going to cross over into one bead on this side. Go straight down into it. One of the eight o's, or the one eight o, just like that. And then we're going to cross over to secure this stitch. We're going to cross over and we're going to go up three beads. So we'll cross over, go into this 8 o, the cube, and the 8 o above it, just like that. And we have our set, our double set here. So we're going to do one more set of herringbone on top of this double set. So we're going to pick up two 8 o's. We're going to go down into just one of the 8 o's here. So we're going to go into the 8 o next to the one we're coming out of. Go down into one, or the one. I don't know why I keep acting like it's plural. And then we're going to cross over and go up two. And that will finish this stitch here that's on top of the double set we made. <clears throat> Pull that thread down deep into there. And this is what you have so far. And it's really repetitive. We're going to do the same thing. So <clears throat> we'll always do two of the 8 o's, two stitches of 8 o's, and then you'll have a set of cubes. And the way you do your cubes is a double set. So now we're going to pick up a cube, two 8 o's, and a cube. And we're going to go down into the bead next to the one we're coming out of. So we're coming out of this 8 out. we're just going to go down into one 8 out right here. And then we're going to bring this down. And let me get you in just a little bit closer for a couple, just to make sure. Now I'm coming out of this 8 out. I'm going to cross over, go into this 8 out, and the cube, and the 8 out on top of it, just like this. So we're going down one and up three. Now we need to make one more single set of 8 o's. So we're going to pick up two 8 o's. We're going to cross over into the 8 o next to the one we're coming out of, go down into it, cross over, and come up both of the 8 o's on this side, just like that. 
Let's do another set, a double set with our cubes. <clears throat> Pick up a cube, two eight o's, and a cube. Just like this. And then you're going to cross over and go down into one of the eight o's on this side. Pull your beads down until they lay out. Cross directly over, go up into the 80 next to the one you're coming out of, and go through the cube and the 80 above the cube. So through three beads on this side. Just like that. And then we're going to pull the thread through. And then you're going to do another set of herringbone. So, well, a single set. So you're going to pick up two. 11 O's or 8 O's seed beads. I don't know where that came from. And you're going to cross over next to the one you're coming out of and go down into it. Then you're going to cross over and you're going to go up through two 8 O's on this side. Pull your thread down deep into the beads and then you will again start with a cube set. Pick up a cube two eight-o's and a cube and go through the bead on this side. And just if you need to, just go ahead and back up the video a little bit and watch the pattern. Do the pattern with me until you have it down and then we will continue to length. So continue making these, these sets until you have 18 crystal units. So I'm just counting the units of crystal. So one, two, three, four, and so on until I have 18 of them. Now this is just under seven inch, seven inches from the tip of this clasp here to my last unit. I want my bracelet to end up to be a little over seven inches, seven and a quarter, seven and a half, something like that. And I intend to put a couple of jump rings on for a extender. So you will judge the length of your bracelet by the amount of units you make. If you make the same amount that I've made, you're going to end up with a little bit over a seven inch bracelet, seven and a quarter, seven and a half, depending upon how much of an extender you put on it. Now, if you want a smaller bracelet, then you're going to go just under six inches. And let me show you on a a ruler so you know what I mean when I'm saying just under. So I have this right at the end, back off here, right at the end of my clasp and I am just a little under seven inches. Get you close so you can see right there. And it doesn't have to be exact, it's just that's what you're going to end up with if you do the same amount of units I have. So if you want to make a smaller bracelet, you'll just go a little under six inches. And if you want to make a bigger bracelet, you'll just go a little under eight inches. And then you will be coming out of your last unit here of crystals. So when we make our crystal units, we make a double unit. So we have one set of eight O's above it. And because I have just one set of eight O's above on this side to make it symmetrical, I'm not going to add that second set of eight O's. And because I'm not doing that, I need to sew through this set just to finish the stitch because it should have a thread underneath it to finish it and pull them together. So what we're going to do <clears throat> is we're coming out of this bead right here. We're going to go down into just this one here. Pull your thread nice and tight go over to the one you started in, go up through the bottom of it, and pull your thread down between the beads nice and deeply, like that. And now that stitch is secure. And then we're going to go ahead and put on our clasping. The first thing is I'm going to grab one of my nice heavy gauge jump rings and I'm going to close it very tightly because it's slightly open so I want to make sure it's closed nice and tightly just by shimmying it back and forth in a twisting motion. Yeah, that's closed. And then I'm going to sew up through this when I make my clasping. So first I have to pick up an 11-0 and then I'm going to pick up an 8-0. And I'm going to drop these down to my piece. And then I'm going to come up through the jump ring. 
Now you can use a wire guardian here if you'd like and then attach the jump ring to the wire guardian. That's up to you. Just make sure your jump ring is very closed and so towards the bottom away from the opening. And then we're going to go back through this 8 right here and just the 8 I'm going to grab it with my fingers and I'm just going to hold it while I pull this jump ring down to the 8 like this. And then I'm going to pick up an 11 seed bead and I'm going to go down through this 8 right here. And I'm going to pull that down. I'm going to sew through this one pass and then I'm going to sew all the way down through the cubes in the second pass just to make sure that the end of my bracelet is very secure. So I'm coming out here, I'm going to cross over and go up through this 8 on this side, the 11 the 8 the clasping is on, and up through the jump ring. Just like this. Pull this all together and then I'm going to come back down through this 8 -o. and the 11 -o on this side and the 8 -o. and then I'm going to go all the way down through the cube. Just like that. And then I'm going to cross over into the cube next to the one I'm coming out of and then go up through all the beads on this side. So I'll go up through that 8 the 11 the 8 then I'll go through my clasping, go down through the 8 again, go through all the beads on this side, and down through that cube too, all the way down. Now I have several passes of thread through that jump ring and it should be nice and secure. And I'm right here underneath these cubes. So what I'm going to do is there's a little thread bridge right here. And I'm going to grab that thread bridge right between the beads. So I'll get you really close so you can see what I'm doing. Whoops, that's a little too close. Come on, clear up. Clear up. There we go. So you can see that I have the thread bridge that's between the um, Eidos and the crystals and I'm just going to pull my needle through and create a loop with my thread go through the loop and pull that knot down on to that thread bridge and then to pull that down even more I'm going to go through three beads on this side pull that down and you can see my knot disappears. And then I'm going to do this again on this thread bridge right here. Between the crystals and the eidos, I'm going to grab another loop, pull a knot, and then I'm just going to come over to this side just to make it more secure. And I'm going to go down through a few beads here and pull it. And at this point, I'm just going to cut it off. Now you can do that as many times as you want working through your bracelet. Just make sure that you stay between the beads on the thread bridge and that you can pull that thread down into the um, grooves between the beads and it's not visible that way. And then sew away from where you put your knot and then you can cut it off. Just like that. And that's what that looks like. And now I'm just going to add a couple of jump rings here. And I think I'm going to make a little dangle. So I will find a, um, let me get a head pin. I think I'll make a dangle first. Okay, I've got one of these little ball head pins. They're always all wrinkled up. Let me straighten one out. And I think I'm just going to drop a cuboid crystal in here like this. And I'm going to grab my round nose pliers and I'm just going to put my tip of my pliers right up against the end of that cube and then I'm going to hold my pliers so that my hand is parallel to the bead mat. I'm going to bend the wire over the prong of the um, plier that's away from me and then I'm going to move my hand vertical so that my pliers are now up and down like this. And then I'm going to bring this wire over the top of that prong 
I'm going to turn my hand and bring the wire underneath so that I create a loop around that little prong of the um, pliers. And I'm going to straighten out my loop a little bit. There we go. Then I'm going to grab my chain nose, I'm going to, or my flat nose actually, and I'm going to hold on to the loop with my flat nose pliers. I'm going to make sure that my wire is oriented parallel to the pliers, so it's the same angle that the pliers are. I'm going to grab my chain nose, and I'm just going to take a couple of wraps, a couple coils around the straight part of the wire there, and then I'm going to clip that off. And I don't have any pliers, so let me grab some. And I'm just going to cut this right here. Maybe. There we go. And grab my chain nose and tuck that little tail in. Be careful not to break your cube. Try to hold on to the ball end a little bit because it twists and it's hard to hold on to. So I'm just going to hold it as best as I can and see if I can get that down. There we go. Got it. Okay. So now I have just a little tiny dingle. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open a couple jump rings, connect them together, and slip that dangle on the jump rings, and then put them on my bracelet. So I'm just opening my jump ring from side to side and I'll show you again because I didn't show you. And then I'm just going to, actually I'm going to close the next one. Make a couple and then put it on there. So I'm going to close this one. I'm going to drop this one on this one. Then I'm going to put this on here and close it tightly. And then I'll open one more. So this time I'll show you. I like to put my pliers so it takes over half of the jump ring so it keeps it nice and secure. If my opening of my jump ring is right here, I'm going to place my other pliers on and just twist it open, just like that. I'm going to drop this on here and then I'm going to drop it on the jump ring on the other jump ring and then close it the way I opened it just by twisting it back. Just like that. And now I have a tiny little extender on my bracelet and I will see if this is actually going to fit. I'm going to have to do this probably off camera because it's a um, it's a lobster claw. So you can see it fits nicely it's a good size, so if I go with this first um, jump ring here, it'll fit me just about right. So let me put it on and I'll show you what it looks and like. And here is what it looks like on my wrist. And let me show you the clasping. So I went ahead and put it on the second loop here. And I have just the right amount of movement, so the little extender is really helpful. And you can put as many jump rings as you want on there for an extender. It, this worked out fine for me. And you can see my cute little dangle here, maybe there. And it just, it looks really good. It looks like a much more complicated bracelet than it is. It's just a simple flat herringbone. Turns out really pretty and it's very stackable. You could do this in a bunch of different colors and just have fun with it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.